Who was a little boy playing in the pool with a little hat. Mm -hmm. Do you picture yourself here too? This one's my second final image. I took this photo because it reminded me of peace. The moon was shining bright and it was just standing out in the quietness of the sky. It reminds me of how I feel when I'm around the person I'm with. She reminds me of the moon standing out among the stars in the sky. I'm 16 years old and I go to Garfield High School. Um, a portrait. Okay. Um, I took this self-portrait in my room and I edited it with um, Photoshop to have that effect and the red in it. So yeah, I thought it was pretty cool and I wanted to use my my uh, digital uh, like digital skills to kind of edit it and stuff. So yeah, that's that's the first one. This photo is, uh, it's in the Central District. It's of a small family-owned Ethiopian restaurant. And I wanna take a picture of it because, uh, because it's like one of like the last small businesses that we have in the Central District or one of the few that we still have left. And you know, like as more people are moving into the Central District, more people can go and eat there and try traditional foods that are rare to the area. Um, this is also a family owned mini mart called Farnell's and many people go and it's been there and like they have a bond with the owners and it's a very special place for them and it's been open for a while. And both of these photos are there because they're they're individual and unique to the Central District and it's crucial for us to preserve these places because they have been built for us from the past generations and we need to keep them for the future generations as well. student who lives in a big city like Seattle, this year is usually all about, you know, college apps, growing up, moving on, and rushing to the end. It's all very fast paced. And photos allow me to remember and they give me the ability to look at each moment and scene and savor it and hold on to. And I wanted people to consider their lives in the moment and the connections around them instead of being so centered in the media, which pushes all of this large scale consumerism, micro trends, and the urge to live a life that is fast and fake. Um, so these photos that, I will, that will be shown <laughs> um, represent the small things like enjoying music, interacting with the people around you, and noticing the small things that which contrast with the moods and habits of usual life. Um, and the issue for this unit that we were talking about that I chose to focus on uh, was climate change and more specifically overconsumption, which stems partly from being so consumed in the media and all of this fake life. Um, for this photo, it was in the Pike Place Market, and it was just this very cheerful vendor that lived, were, was listening to music while selling all these prints. And what stands out to me is all the repetition of this art that frames him and surrounds him. Um, and this guy is just so immersed in his own world and enjoying the moment with his headphones on. Um, and this one was also in Pike Place Market. I think it was on a different day, though. Um, and I liked how just Every section was just so detailed and filled with all of this warmth. Um, and for me, this photo shows that like in the current day, it contrasts that how in the current day, everyone is so wrapped up in social media and again, this fake world around them that passes by so quickly, leading to that increase of consumption and the lack of awareness for the small moments. And one thing I wanted people to lean more into is the ability to observe the other perspectives that exist. In such a fast world like this, often the main thing we think about is our own perspectives, how people view us, what we're going to do that day, what we'll post on Instagram, etc. And I wanted to show people a peek into the lives of others and remind them that these small moments among the strangers that surround us also exist. 
And in this class, having access to a camera and being surrounded by people who are equally as interested in capturing different perspectives draws me more and more into noticing the minute details in moments that exist each day. And seeing everyone else's creative processes and capturing and editing has been very eye-opening and inspirational for me. Um, and one question that I was gonna ask people is what routines in your life do you take for granted? What are some small moments each day that ground you? And is there any time that you can choose to be in that moment instead of, you know, picking up your phone, scrolling? And yeah. picture is a picture of me. Um, I took my uh, walk, my Ramadan walk. Um, since it's the moment where everyone is fasting during the holy month of Ramadan, I wanted to take um, pictures that represented what moment I was in. And I wanted, um, wanted it to take a new perspective or a new um, approach where it's not like cheerful and light, lively. It's something something you could like uh, perceive uh, in your own um, thinking. And um, for me, this is it's a very cool picture and I wanted it to represent how um, Islam is not only about religious stuff and it's far more wide and open to everyone's own capabilities or anything you, you would like to do. Uh, this is also a picture of me with the same lamp and basically has the same approach as the first one. Um, since my uh, cause was to end Islamophobia, which is like a very big thing to do, I started uh, with a small take where you just have to show the world what Islam is to you. And to me, it's something, uh, something very um, close to me, like home. And I love how this uh, came out with the light and the motion. It's it's my first time taking photography, and I love how this came out. It was something new and unique to me. Um, and I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> This was a picture I took of, um, there's a body of water somewhere, I don't know where. My sister took me, it was the day before Ramadan, and I was, just wanted to go and relax. And uh, the view was very captivating, so I took it. Um, yeah, it's just to show Awesome. Yay. Yay. My name is Nir Langdi and I'm in 10th grade. What led me to photography, the photography world was watching David Attenberger wildlife documentaries when I was growing up. And I'd imagine myself as the person taking the shots and I constantly annoyed my siblings by like, pausing the screen to like analyze each shot. <laughs> and my self portrait, that's me behind a Lacan mask, which is used in Thai theater. And my grandma, she really likes it, and I really like my grandma. Um, the change I want to express through my photos is about protecting nature, so David Attenborough can keep making films, but also because it's good for the planet, too. Mm -hmm. uh, for my, in my first photo, I narrowed it down to protecting trees, the lungs of our land. Some context behind the photo is the transit station. In my neighborhood used to have lots of trees around it, but Many of them were cut down and replaced with an obsessive amount of city lights. The wavy streaks of the lights was a cool accident when I was playing around with the lighting of the camera settings. I kept it because it disordered around the trees, mimicking the situation. Mm -hmm. For my second photo, it's about the wildlife of nature. Some important elements are the flaw shaped like a fish, the fact, the fact that it's plastic, and the crow itself is the subject taken. Mm -hmm. The crow, his name is Monty. Um, he and I are close, so I knew that he was smart enough not to actually eat the floss, but pose with it. And he was attracted by the banana bread I placed behind it. 
Um, I wanted to show how different it was from when birds used to eat their natural foods, but now they unknowingly digest litter and plastic. It would have been better if I used a bird that naturally ate fish, but this was the only bird I knew that was at ease with me, so I went with that rather than spend countless hours with a random seagull that could possibly swallow with loss. <laughs> what drew me to create this photograph was seeing all the plastic and trash at my bus stop every day because there's so much wildlife that's affected by it that you wouldn't really notice unless you stop and look and really listen around the trees and bushes and cracks and crevices of the bus stop. Mm -hmm. Hashtag protect my teeth. Yeah. I'm Laura Lang and I'm an 11th grader. I go to Highline High School. I'm from Buxton and I came and ever since I was a kid I like photography. My dad had this little camera that he took everywhere and took pictures of us and I was intrigued by it but he didn't have a lesson with it because I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And this is a self portrait that I actually directed. I didn't take it. And my friend took it for me. So. And I like taking pictures of people when I go outside. I am like intrigued by how different they paint. A common theme in my pictures are people. Every person has a story that others don't know anything about. And I feel like when I look at other people and I capture a moment and I look back at my photos, I think about them and think about like what emotions they might be hiding, what they might be thinking about in that moment. This is a picture of this girl. She's an international student. She plays basketball really good, but my team really, my coach didn't really treat her that good. You can see. Mm. Like I think about her a lot. And that's why I told her to be the main character in my picture. Mm. So, and this is a picture I took at a, uh, on a field trip to start an organization. And the cell, she looked really cool. Her outfit was good. And I was like really intrigued by how, yeah, how she like handled herself. And she was like going out and around, like she was smiling and everything, but I was like intrigued by like what she felt and what's the mystery behind her. So I took this picture. Hello, um, my name is Paloma Lee. Um, uh, I'm 17 years old. Um, this is my self-portrait. It's a long exposure and I like it because it highlights my makeup, um, which I love to experiment with every day. Um, I also love the blurriness and the streaks of light that appear in my eyes. Um, okay, uh, I used a long exposure technique where I zoomed in slowly while taking a two second long image. Um, this technique helped me produce this time warp of a picture. It's hazy and drags you into the world it was taken in. It's also um, entitled Seasick. Seasick? Yeah. <laughs> um, this is, oh sorry, you're good. Uh, this is my second image. Um, the title is Carrot Top. Um, it's inspired by the phrase Carrot Top when referring to redheads. <laughs> um, it was taken on Vashon Island in a random bookstore. Um, the woman with the red hair is obscured by the carrot because it leaves questions unanswered. Who is this woman? Um, what is she doing? Um, I chose these images because they remind me of a whimsical moment from two very different movies. Um, some of my favorite cinep cinematography has been um, from Wes Anderson's films, um, Bones and All, Emma, and Poor Things. Um, these inspirations helped me come to the decisions I made for my finals. Um, their unique uses of symmetry, colors, eerie feeling scenes, and unapologetic weirdness fed my creative mind. Um, I'm constantly inspired by artists around me and the people who produce the media I consume. Um, <laughs> these pictures uh, encourage the viewer to create their own his or their own story and connection to a world of their own. Yay. Hello, my name is Shahir Amadafridi, and I'm a junior at Nathan Hill High School. Uh, this is my self-portrait. Uh, I did this by using like a like cube mirror uh, object and my bathroom mirror. And I'll talk about the meaning about it uh, along with the next image. 
So my self-portrait and the skeleton poster both share a common theme of belonging and self-identity, or rather, lack of it. The bleakness and colorness represent an eternal isolation and disconnection within me about my culture and my mother, my mother tongue, so much so that I sometimes feel lost in terms of who I am, which is sad because I want to be close and cling to my identity. Um, like the skeleton in the second photo is an analogy of me in a way because it's clinging to something that's dear in a place that doesn't have it. Although my home and certain cultural links have kept me close to my roots, it still feels like I've, I, I have to leave a part of myself for when I go to school or anywhere in general that has me switch to my Eng American English side of me. Essentially, this is why the two photos, my portrait and this one, are the way they are. They show my current struggle for my cultural identity within myself, but they lay a point of contrast for when I do feel connected to my roots. Mm -hmm. So for the last photo is of Chai Tea, which is my personal favorite photo. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason for this is because the Chai Tea shown in the photo has always been prominent in not only my life, but for my family as a whole. So when it came to the change I wanted to see, which was for more physical links to one's own culture, in particular immigrants, it was an obvious personal choice to make chai as the main subject of this photo, as it truly is one of the only interactable links I have to my own culture. But making the photo vibrant, bright, and in a warm tone reflects not only the pleasurable experience of drinking a hot chai, but also the emotion and warmth that surrounds it when it was made and served to family. The warm feeling of home and belonging matches the essence of what this photo represents to me. And it's a visual and physical representation of my roots, and a celebration of culture and a reminder of my warmth and love that my family shares, all encapsulated in the simple act of making and enjoying a cup of chai together. Um, I'm Sophia Boyd. I am a junior at Garfield High School. Um, dark and mysterious, first glance, Colors, expressions, dreams, engaging, contrast, texture, brightness, warm, vintage, fun, abstract. All words my classmates use to describe my art. These masks are three in a row, so similar yet so different. All amazingly handcrafted for different meaning within each of them. The fuzziness and smoothness is cozy in a way. <laughs> The rainbowness and haziness of this character sitting all lonesome is so deep yet so colorful. The craziness but somehow put together makes you think about how you should be yourself and still be colorful while lighting up the world with your presence of being there. The CCC was amazing this quarter and I've loved coming to every class. Being here with other artists my age is so cool, realizing how we're so similar but so, so different when it comes to art. Art is one umbrella, but has so many different branches that help someone describe themselves that you're unable to see from just glancing at them. Life is gorgeous, don't you love it? Mm -hmm. Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie Cortez, and I am 18 years old. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, about the images you're about to see, I wanted to explore about the ordinary and the simple things in my life. Um, the thing that captivated me most this quarter, I think it was motion and reflection. Um, I like the idea of movement since everything around us is in constant change. I wanted something that represented those transitions. Um, in my view, I stick the ordinary and make it memorable, which is why photography is so impactful for me. Um, I took the environment uh, around me and, and make it everlasting with a click of a camera. So this first picture, um, I had to use a slow shutter speed to keep uh, to capture the motion of the hands through different like split of seconds. Um, this technique is something really fun that I had to experiment with um, because the results were often unexpected and I had to change like what I had to do to get the result that I wanted. But um, it has truly the effect of seeing something as simple as hands and then a new abstract way, which made little, the little things more engaging for me. Mm -hmm. And then for my second image, it's just simply my cat. 
Um, he's the most entitled muse that I ever had. <laughs> but he's always my go-to subject when experimenting with a new technique. Um, his eyes are often something that I want to focus on, especially the reflection of what he sees and what he finds interesting, um, inter entertaining. Um, his mind is always a mystery to me, and I felt that capturing his eyes would give me a little clue or a little vision to what he's thinking. Mm. And that is all. And I am very excited to share. I got y'all's checks in my hand, so you're going to get your first paycheck um, for all the hard work.